All right, this is Mr. Hevener. We're doing uh, bond enthalpy notes. This is part two of the bonding unit. I'm right in front of uh, Chevy Chase's classic house. So, <laughs> um, all right. So, thinking about ionic bonding according to Coulomb's law. So, first of all, what we're talking about is crystal water. You can see that in there. Get this out of the way. There we go. Oh my gosh. There it is. <laughs> this is a crystal lattice. Um, it would be better to see it in person. But um, what we got, this is like sodium chloride. You got sodium surrounded on all one, one, two, three, four, five, six sides um, by chlorine. And chlorine is surrounded on six sides by sodium. So that's a crystal lattice. And what we're looking at is these fictitional pipe cleaners are the bonds or the energy. Um, that we're trying to interpret here. And you can use Coulomb's Law, which is theoretical. AP focuses more on that. Um, or we got Bohr and Haber, which is the experimental. And they both get to around the same answer, um, give or take a little bit. So, writing this down. Yeah, Coulomb's Law could be considered if bonding was based purely on ionic forces. All right, so we got energy equals 2.31 times 10 to the negative 19, and that's uh, joules times nanometers. So that's our constant. We got Q1 times Q2 divided by R. Okay, or you could write it as E equals R times Q1 times Q2 divided by R. All right, so Q represents the charge of the ions, and uh, R is the distance. So here we're doing like sodium, and then there's chlorine. We're looking at the charge. Um, and R is the distance between the two nuclei. Na and Cl. Since in, since in an ion one Q value will be negative, the negative energy calculated will always be negative. This means that the ionic bonds will have negative associated energy. Basically, when they are in a bond, they are said to be in a lower energy state than when separated. In general, chemical systems always want to interact to be in the lowest, meaning more stable possible, energy state. Okay, I miswrote that, sorry. Okay, so K is the constant, 2.31 times 10 to the 19. Do you have that somewhere in the package? Yep, right here. No, 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 that's more AP focuses on that. Um, so off the top of my head, I would say no, which means you're not going to need really to know that for the test. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Why isn't it R squared? Um, well, R is, in this case, it's just the distance between the two nuclei, so yeah. we're just looking at, because it's not, it's not two distances, it's just one distance we're looking at. Oh, I just meant like, in physics, like the gravitational force and the, um, what is it, the magnetic forces are all R squared. Hmm. Uh, physics is the one uh, subject I'm not certified to teach yet, so. <laughs> to be able to make a comparison, sorry. It's on my bucket list, but, you know. Well, science. Well, probably, well, you know, I like writing. Like, that's one of my strong suits, yeah. writing and reading. Well, I'm a slow reader, but, you know, I didn't like the ACT. <laughs> um, all right. What are we talking about? Oh, lattice energy. So lattice energy is going to be negative. 
when the two ions come together, they release energy. That's negative. Um, solid binary ionic compounds consist of stable crystal lattice. How strongly the ions in the lattice attract one another in solid is indicated by the lattice energy, change in energy that takes place when separated gaseous ions are packed together to form an ionic solid. It's important to note that both metal and nonmetal must be in gaseous states. I'm going to underline that, gaseous states. That's going to come back from born Haber. Because um, if they're not in the gaseous states, then we can't calculate their um, enthalpy or their lattice energy. Lattice energy will have a negative sign, so think of it as the energy released when two ions come together. Two ions come together, releases. But this is where it's confusing, and I want to address this right now. In the data booklet, let's just figure out what page this is on. I should have done that. Oh, it makes sense to do that. Pop right into it. Page 16 in your data booklet. That's the magic page for enthalpy. And if we look at it, wait a minute. It's didn't didn't the words just say it was negative? Yeah. It was negative. Why are they positive? Uh, it's basically which angle are you looking? Are you looking from the inside out or the outside in? Um, if they come together, it's going to release energy. It's going to be negative. Um, but if you think of taking them apart, you have to input energy. So the Born-Haber and, and IB folks, they look at it through the perspective of uh, taking it apart, how much energy is required. Whereas Coulomb's Law is kind of talking about uh, when you put them together, how much energy is released type of deal. So uh, don't let that uh, confuse you. So we'll do some examples. But first of all, uh, estimation of lattice energy. we got to figure out which one is going to have um, bigger lattice energy. And I think there's this continues on the next page where it kind of explains. No, it doesn't. All right. So rule of thumb is, let's write these down, bigger charge equals bigger lattice energy. We'll just call it delta H lat. That's what it is uh, in an equation. So this is lattice energy. All right, so bigger charge, more lattice energy. We can also say shorter bond equals the same, bigger lattice energy. So looking at this, we got NaCl and KCl. So Cl is the same, all right? But then we got sodium versus potassium are the two different ones. All right. Both of them have the same charge, plus one charge, right? Yeah, they do. They're both in the first uh, column, alkali metals. So now uh, how about maybe shorter bonds? So Na versus K, which one's more electronegative, K or Na? Which one is smaller? Sodium is smaller. Therefore, the smaller the atom, the uh, less shields it has, or the less inner electrons, and therefore the greater ability to keep its electrons. So sodium is going to have a higher electronegativity. The trend is fluorine has the highest, so as you go left and as you go up, the uh, electronegativity gets bigger and bigger. So sodium has the most electronegativity. Therefore, it's going to... Um, really be drawn to that chlorine atom more so than potassium because because um, it, it's not going to want to get lose its electron as much as potassium wants to get rid of its electron so it's going to you know chase after chlorine a little bit closer so in a nutshell shorter bond so sodium chloride has a shorter bond than kcl therefore sodium chloride is going to have a higher um, lattice enthalpy. NaCl. Um, let's look at a similar example. We got LiF or LiCl. So the consistent one is Li, all right? So what's different is the F and the Cl. They both have a negative charge, so that's not a factor. But fluorine is smaller than chlorine. It's actually um, the smallest halogen. So therefore, it's definitely going to be more electronegative. It's going to have a shorter bond. So in this case, which one is higher lattice enthalpy?
Yes, there we go. LIF is going to have the shorter bond because F is more electronegative. So it um, makes lithium chase after its lost electron a little bit more closer. So. All right, and then the next one. We have BACL2 or BAO for this one. Uh, barium is two plus. Barium is two plus. That's not different. However, chlorine is one minus, but oxygen is two minus. Which one has a bigger charge? The two minus one. You got it. So oxygen has a bigger charge than chlorine. Bigger charge equals bigger lattice enthalpy. So barium oxide is going to have a higher lattice enthalpy. So the key to know is bigger charge, more energy, or a shorter bond, more energy. And that makes sense because uh, lithium fluoride, if we're going back to number two, has a shorter bond, higher electronegativity, so it's going to take more energy to pull it away, to break it apart. All right. So most of our time is going to be, we're just going to talk about the concepts for Coulomb's Law. I haven't seen any Coulomb's Law in the IB curriculum. They focus on the experimental, the Born Haber. And um, this is the whole process of identifying lattice enthalpy, essentially. It's looking at all of the things you need to do in an experiment. So the first step we got, here, here's our equation. We got lithium ion plus fluorine ion equals lithium fluoride solid in their, in their gaseous state. And here's our lattice enthalpy. All right. Wait, am I, am, am I a step apart? I'm one step ahead. Oh, yeah, I was a step ahead. Okay. Um... Okay, we got to get through this page before we do the born haber So looking at this, it says write the reverse reaction. Notice that delta H last is negative value, meaning energy is released when they come together. It can also be separated as the reverse of this reaction. So write the reverse reaction. Well, it would be lithium F. This is just showing why on the data booklet it's positive values instead of negative, because it should be negative values. So if we, and it, if you can see the ions come together, it's negative energy, the enthalpy. But if you pull them apart, you got to input energy to do that. So that's going to be um, lithium plus. Sorry, I put that on the wrong slide there. Fluorine one minus. And then our delta H of our lattice enthalpy equals positive 1047 kilojoules per mole. Is it the same value of energy? Yeah. Absolute value at least. All right, so the last enthalpy is a little bit different than heat of formation. So heat of formation is looking at the overall uh, reaction. Like, uh, what's the energy to form this? from our original starting points, not our ions. Uh, if we look at here, we don't have ions. We have uh, just regular molecules. And that's what heat of formation is looking at. How do you make the um, uh, ionic compound from your starting points? This is lattice enthalpy. How do you make an ionic compound from your gaseous ions? So, um, slightly different. It'll make more sense as we get through it. Um, here's an endothermic example. Endothermic, it's positive heat of formation. We got our two uh, molecules forming NO2. And in exothermic, you've got negative heat of formation. You've got your two atoms or elements forming a compound. So it's the overall equation. And, and this is ionic. Uh, that's not. So. All right. Bornhaber process utilizes Hess's law to break down the formation of a solid ionic crystal into numerous steps, one of which being the lattice enthalpy of a compound. This is essentially one of one way that we can actually experimentally calculate lattice enthalpies. So the other way being Coulomb's law, although that's theoretical. All right. So this is what I wanted to get to. This is uh, 
for in Haber. So it should be review, walk down memory lane, or um, hopefully. <laughs> so using the example, we got lithium plus fluorine equals lithium fluoride. Notice how these are not ions because this is a heat of formation. This is the overall equation from start to finish. Um, all right, so step one, sublimation. Because remember, in order to form uh, an ion, it's got to be in its gaseous state. So this is in its solid state. So the heat of sublimation is the amount of energy required to um, go from a solid to a gas, to sublime. Uh, yeah. And it's 161 kilojoules per mole. Yeah, I don't have the equation written down, so we got the equation is lithium solid. Um, to lithium gas. So all we're doing is going from solid to gas. And technically it looks like it's endothermic so we put plus 161 if you're putting the whole thermonuclear equation down. Alright, um, step two. And actually writing this, I don't know, maybe you could write it down towards the bottom or on a scratch sheet. We'll write this down. We've got I'm going to show you the chicken scratch basics that um, IB would be interested in seeing if you had a born Haber question like this on a test. Um, let's see. So we got that. All right. It's our first step. And then uh, number two, ionization. A lithium atoms because you can't just have lithium gas it's got to be a lithium ion in order to form a, um, a lattice structure so the uh, ionization energy is 520 kilojoules per mole I'm giving that to you on the test they'll give you the heat of sublimation but anytime you got ionization energy it's going to be in the data booklet so you'll be given just enough information and the information they don't give you you find in the data booklet and you don't really find second ionization energies in the uh, data booklet, which would suggest that IB is only going to ask you simple questions like um, lithium or sodium or potassium, elements that only form a plus one charge. They only lose one electron. Because it gets more confusing when you got to do a second ionization energy. Okay, trying to find this. This is on one of the periodic tables in the beginning. Yes, so I would write down, what page is this? Page 8. So page 8 in the data booklet. We got, which element? We're working with lithium. First ionization energy, top left, 520. And it's kilojoules per mole. Oh, they gave it to us, 520. So IB is not going to give it to you. you got to search it out in the data booklet. Page 8. All right. Um, and then how would we write an equation? Well, we got lithium gas. So we're continuing on from that. Uh, technically, it's endothermic. So you'd put the 520 on the reactant side if it was a full thermonuclear equation. Um, and then we got lithium gas plus, plus an electron because it lost one. All right. So we're writing this down. Lithium gas All right, in our And again, there's another way to write this which is a little more confusing But IB does not require it It is looks like this and this is page 240 uh, this is just a visual representation IB is not looking at you to do it that way but I'll write that uh, down page 240 page 240 but if you do it like this this is fine also all right next 
disassociation of F2. So you can't just have a fluorine connect. It's got to be broken up. So we got to break that up. Um, and this will not be given to you because you could find it in the data booklet. Let's find where that is. I believe it's bond enthalpies on page 11. Man, they're making us use this data booklet. All right. So here we got F, and then here's an F. So an FF is 159, and it's in kilojoules per mole. Oh, that's where I got 159. So if they wouldn't give it to you, you'd have to find it. Um, all right, and then we'd have to write this equation down. And these are already a gas. All right. Um, so 159 kilojoules is the amount in one bond of an F2 molecule. But if you split it up, which one gets the energy? Or do they both get half? They both get half. All right. So technically it's not uh, 159, it's half of 159. So we would write... 1 half of uh, 159. Anybody know what that is? Oh, let's get that calculator out. All right, so. Oh, I don't know, is that right? Oh, yeah, 79.5. All right. <laughs> All right, so when we write it down here, we're going to have. Um, because we only want half because we only want one F, not both of them. Oh, sorry about that. It's a gas. Hey, it's already a gas. Are we going to have to do sublimation on this one? Nope. That's convenient. Equals oh, one half equals 79.5. Hmm. All right, sorry, I'm being sloppy here. So technically lithium and fluorine don't have anything to do together, so we'll separate them. So this is one thing that's happening. Here's another thing that's happening. Um, all right. So next... Oh, we do have to have an ion. It's got to be an anion. So, oh my gosh, we just got three minutes. Okay, let's try to finish. Or no, do we have, how much time do we have? Three minutes, all right. Um, so, this is the, um, what, do you, what do you call it when you add, add an electron? Electron. Uh, in it. P affinity. There we go. Electron affinity. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just trying to find that page on here. Electron affinity. Oh, it's the same page as ionization. So this is page eight. Electron affinity. Hey guys, we're almost done, we're almost done. There's electron affinity right there, look at that. And it is negative 328, negative 328, that's where they got it. So, the, But they wouldn't give it to you on the IB test. Um, all right. So this is where we got F gas turns into F minus gas. Oh, and we had to receive an electron, all right. Um, and the delta H in this is uh, negative 328 kJ per mole. All right, and this continues on from our F. We're going from F gas to F minus gas. And uh, we had to add an electron, most likely from the lithium. 
and the delta H is negative 328 kilojoules per mole. Oh wow, we're getting really close because if we got two in a negative ion and a positive ion, they can come together and form a lattice structure. But we'll save that for tomorrow. Yes. <laughs>